You can now support the Terrible Warriors by visiting patreon.com slash terrible warriors. Today, on the Terrible Warriors, we take a trip to the Wild West that never was. A new campaign as Cassie, Ori, are joined by new player Jen as Game Master Justin takes his dogs into the vineyard. In a land besieged by demonic attacks, the dogs patrol the branches of the territorial authority. They deliver the mail, oversee official documents like marriages, birth certificates, death certificates. But really, they're there to protect you from the demons. On the edges of each town, the forces of darkness plot to corrupt, drive you mad, and kill. The dogs answer to no one but themselves and the prophets above. And as our new dogs are sent into a branch for the first time, they have to find out what's wrong in Paint Creek. There is no solution to this campaign. There is no answer that is the answer. Over the next three episodes, our dogs will find out who they really are. Will they bring mercy and justice? Or will they be corrupted by their own powers of pride? Well, let's find out together. For these dogs that roam the vineyard, they are your terrible warriors. I am your game master for this campaign, Justin Eacock. I am sitting around the table with my trio of dogs. We'll explain in a moment, but first, uh, from my left, your right, we have here. Hey, everybody. It's me, Cassie D20 Love Chew. It's Cassie. Eating trail mix. I'm sorry. Is my voice like a lot louder than everyone else's in your ears? Or is that just me? No, it yeah. seems it seems about the same. Yeah. Okay. Oh, hey, Ori. Oh, hey, how's it going? It's Ori Falconer. Yes, it is. That's me. You're doing a thing. I am doing a thing. I'm here with with my dogs. B- bark with what me up, if dog? you're my dogs. <laughs> I'm a gangster. Different, different, I'm a straight different, up G. Up G. <laughs> different kind of dogs oh. this time. And new to you, the show. Uh, sorry. Well, we'll just yeah. wait. We're not we actual dogs. No, I, I misunderstood. This no, game that was entirely. Pugmire. Yeah. <laughs> that was Pugmire, like a few few As weeks Ori, ago. Like, with uh, gets up out of his dur- during, during the, the summer. That was the Derek. Door. Derek doing Pugmire. Um, no, we got new to the show. Hi, uh, welcome. Say hi to uh, who are you? Hi, I'm Jen Walker. <laughs> and uh, cool, nice. Uh, nice. I've wanted you on the show. I've known Jen for years, and I've uh, just wanted to bring her onto a game for a while. And then I brought it up while we were drunk at a bar, and she said yes. Yeah, this is my first. RPG experience ever. She's hey! never played an RPG hey! before. Hey. <laughs> Super cool. So we're uh, it stands for rocket propelled grenade. That's I mean, way more exciting than so, I was led to yeah. believe. So you're not wrong. It does also mean that, but in this context, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. we uh, are going to be trying an, not just a new game rule set, but also a, a different kind of of setting as well. Um, <laughs> I, 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 I've, I've specifically brought Ori to this game to help lighten the mood because I am terrified that I'm going to create a really serious, <laughs> dire and dour world and, and I want to have a little bit of levity. So I brought in our troubadour. I hope to... he screws it up. <laughs> <laughs> Don't screw it up. And yeah. The Don't game itself... It up. <laughs> <laughs> the game itself is called Jeez. Dogs in the Vineyard. And it was released, I think, around 2005. It's an indie game. And it's um, set in the Wild West that never was in uh, a religious state that's formed out uh, in the West of and not defined, but let's face it, it's basically America and it's based loosely uh, loosely on the early uh, uh, days of Mormonism. Um, but uh, that diverts away from really the core of this game is, as the game creator put it, uh, a bunch of kids are sent into town to solve problems, and the only thing they're given to solve those problems is a book and a gun. You will be playing uh, a group of dogs, or the king's dogs, or the order of the faith put aside to preserve the faith and the faithful. Um, And uh, you play as a group of traveling judges, 
uh, clerics, monks. Uh, you deliver mail. You bring supplies to towns. You keep the order between the different branches of the territorial authority, which is uh, or or uh, this this area in the West has been put aside as a place for the faithful of the King of Life to live in peace and contemplation with each other. But things don't go that simple because you have uh, uh, people who are not of the faith who come in as traders from the east. You have uh, 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 the the original inhabitants of the area, the mountain people who don't believe in your faith. And, uh, of course, actual demons that are actually attacking you and trying to get you to commit murder all the time. Uh, the supernatural of this game is very real and very dark. And, in fact, uh, as part of our character creation, we each had to come up with an accomplishment that our characters had to overcome as part of their initiation to become a dog. We're not going to do that here because we spend way too long on this show doing character creation when I'm a GM. So we've skipped that. But we did record it, and I'm probably going to put it up onto our Patreon site soon. Uh, what was really cool was Ori's accomplishment got super dark. And you, what, yeah, what did like you have you to say, do? Like I, by the way, I'm not. I never try to make something like ridiculous beyond its its scope or something. But no, I I just had a, a really we had this really cool moment of me like in my backstory of uh being a dog like having to overcome a fear of demons yeah and it and it played out in a really really fun way it was this weird like um because demons in this game and i should let you know uh listener um are, are a little different. They're not like from supernatural. They're uh, they're non corporeal entities. They don't take physical form in our world. So they're constantly doing things like creating plagues and famines and bad dreams. And then sometimes, if they get someone to start worshiping them, they can begin to possess people and they can start taking physical form through people. But they don't have names or even motivations. They're just this this force of darkness that is always trying to break in. Now, the way people in this territory are able to survive is by following the rules of the of 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 the tree of life and the king of life. And uh, and if they follow along, they get their protection. And the protection from the light prevents the demons from destroying them. Um, the rules aren't always fair and they're not always egalitarian and a lot of them are misogynistic. Uh, and yet they've been put in place because if you follow them, it's been proven the demons don't attack you and they don't destroy you and they don't kill you. And so the faithful take on this uh, – these practices. They don't drink. Uh, they don't sleep around. They don't swear. Um, there is limited – uh, allowances for forms of polygamy. For the most part, that's not even the case. It's all very monogamous relationships. And uh, and, and it has a very patriarchal structure. And, and there's some problems with all of that, but they all follow it because when you do, the demons don't kill you. So that kind of quells any debates in this particular setting. Um, and so uh, when Ori was up against his demon. He wasn't face to face with a monster. He was face to face with a box that was laughing at him in his mind mm. that was blowing wind that you couldn't see as light around began to dim even though he was outside and he was accosting him with visions. And it was just – it was really – was uh, I was kind of just – Scary. In, yeah, I was kind of just in conflict with my own insecurities yeah, you're, as a character. You were fighting like, your past and your fears and the demon was just sort of almost holding up a mirror to you. Yeah. So. But that, yeah, it was a really cool, like, psychological horror moment. Yeah. Yeah. Now, the game isn't always going to be focusing on religious aspects. Uh, that That's a side of it, um, certainly, because the towns that you will be visiting, something is wrong in them. And people are... Um, are, are either messing around with the rules or they've taken on false doctrine or even worse, started up a cult of their own and they're controlling demons. And the ultimate goal of all of the demons is murder and hate. And they want the branches of the tree of life to burn and kill everyone and then to spread that disease to other branches. Um, and they want nothing more than to destroy uh, humanity through their own hatred. And so uh, that's a side of the game. And then the other side is just the, the moral complications of going to town and solving everyone's problems because 
when the dogs show up, they're just like everyone comes at them with their own problem. They're like, help me with this. You know, consecrate my marriage, name my baby. Uh, this guy keeps stealing from me. And you're just like, ah, oh, I don't have time for this. I, I gotta go on and do my like important stuff. Um, and we had that with Cassie and Jen. Your accomplishments were much more rooted in the real world. Uh, uh, Jen uh, has her character's got a history of stealing, and uh, uh, you have a complicated background that you're sort of. Uh, I put it as uh, Captain Kirk with Pike in the 2009 Abrams movie where Pike convinces Kirk to join Starfleet. You had a similar moment with a mentor of your own who convinced you to sort of leave this sort of path you were going down and instead devote yourself to the dogs and try and put, do something right in the world instead of constantly doing wrong. And, of course, what you did while you were in the temple, you stole from the temple. Yeah. You, <laughs> you, you, you steal from the dogs. You, you, you tried to overcome your own... Uh, uh, impulses, and you 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 did not succeed. I made it way worse. You made it way worse. And so you uh, you've got some real um, habitual problems that um, maybe are going to get you in trouble uh, as we continue, because th- this stuff carries behind you as a wake of of almost like of theft, destruction. Oh, it's scandals. Sometimes your good intentions just leave you down a darker path. Sometimes you I just want to <laughs> take money from the offering plate. Well, they're not, not going to miss it. <laughs> and, uh, and Cassie, uh, you're more of a, a, a character who is uh, a, a more of a sheltered and peaceful upbringing. You've never fired a gun at a human being before. And your accomplishment was to try and get over that fear. And, uh, well, um, you ended up succeeding in getting through the conflict without shooting your gun. So you never had to get over that fear. And so that still follows you as up to this point, you have still never shot a person. Yep. And you've never even shot at a person. No. Nope. You've only done target practice and you've been able to negotiate your way out of any conflict. But, um, you know, that that is probably going to – honestly, that's a target for the GM to focus it on. Oh, yeah. Oh, 100%. <laughs> and I, I, I expect you to. And it will be really interesting to see what happens because of it. So, like, I take absolutely no offense to any of that. Like – so It'll bef- just be interesting regardless. So before we get to our town, um, and, I'll, and, I'll, and I'll describe how we get there, um, this is – we're still at uh, Bridal Falls City, which is the capital city of, 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 uh, of, of the territory. And uh, it's the, the center of – it's your, almost like your Vatican. It's your Salt Lake City. It's, it's the center point of, of, of the faith and of the state and – you, you, I don't know what you're doing, or you're just kind of bouncing. No, <laughs> hey, does. this is a radio show. Oh, are you, are you, are you on a horseback? Are you, are you just sure. feeling the horse as you go through? Okay, cool. Yeah. So you uh, have all in been, you've all graduated from your training uh, as your as, as dogs. You've all been given um, every every dog is given a gun, given a horse, and is given a coat, and the coat is. An important reflection. Oh, I don't have of coat on my thing. Did, by the way, we did talk about it. We'll, we'll write that down. Um, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll get the details if we need the dice. Okay, cool. So, the coat. I know we were going to talk about it, but then I got tired and hung up the phone. Um, <laughs> when uh, when you are given your coat, the the dogs all wear coats that are made from their home community. While you're training back home, your village is working together to put together designs of your family and, and of your own history and, and colors to remind you of where you're from. Uh, and, and, and they put a coat together and it's packaged and it's sent off so it arrives to the temple on the day of your initiation and that as part of your graduation, it's your badge of office. For you, it's a reminder of where you came from. It's a source of your internal strength. It's a place to root you when you're facing up against the darkness and the evil of the world as you walk the vineyard. You will be um, always have on you a reminder of where you are from and that you are a dog and that you are a member of the faith. Uh, it is also for everyone else a sign to be like, watch out, this guy's a dog. And when the dogs come in with their colored quilted coats, that can be that can induce fear and authority and respect. And uh, people tend to drop their poker faces when a dog's coat walks into the room because unlike the territorial authority and the army and even the stewards of each local branch, the dogs answer only to the ancients and the prophets. They don't answer to anyone else. Think like the specters from Mass Effect. You are 
you're, you're the Judge Dreads kind of thing. You walk in, your only authority over people is over the congregation as a whole. So you can't kick in a door and be like, stop beating your wife unless it affects the entire congregation, right? You have to justify that. If, if someone's beaten their wife, you have to go to the steward of that town and go, you need to tell that guy to start treating his wife with respect. And you have to go through that sort of chain of command unless you can justify, which as a dog, you almost always can because no one can call you out on it, that it affects the congregation. You answer only to yourself. You chose to be on this path yourself. No one recruited you. No one drafted you. In fact, no one even graduated you. You did your initiation. You have chosen that you have now completed your, 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 your training and you have decided – through your own reflection that you are ready to begin your path as a dog and you are given your coat. What do your coats look like? Because what I described is not what the three of you are wearing <laughs> as we talked about it. <laughs> and that's the beautiful part is there's, there's the expectation of the world and then there's the reality of the world and the two are never together. So Cassie, your coat that was sent to you on the day of your graduation. Yeah. It wasn't what I described where the whole family got together and everyone worked together to work in their stories and their colors to remind you of home. Yeah, no, not really, no. Yeah, I don't, none of that at all. Um. <laughs> Your mother um, outsourced. Yeah, basically. <laughs> you come from a, a, one of the more well-off to-do families. Yeah. Uh, they're, they're traders. They get a lot of money from bringing goods from the east into the west, and, and, they, and they made some money, with, especially with uh, the more, more travelers that are coming into the territory now as more faithful arrive and begin setting up new branches. Your parents have made quite a lot of money in that process of bringing people in and taking a bit of, 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 a, of a reasonable cut of the profits of selling goods to them and, and settling new families. And so they're, they're pretty wealthy, uh, rightfully so. It's not, a, it's not a scandal that they're wealthy. Some families have money and some families don't, and that's fine. Yeah. Um, it also meant, though, that you didn't really have a close family. You, no, you went, no. You actually went to boarding school. Yeah, they actually... There isn't even boarding school in this day and age, but you went to like a private home yes. where other children went that were also from wealthy families. You were all sort of taught as a group. That is correct. Where, yeah, where, where most children would have been homeschooled, I, I, my parents were too busy to be taking care yeah, of me. You've grown so up in Bridal Falls off. cities. You've almost never left Bridal Falls. Mm -hmm. uh, your family who lives out on another branch would send money and supplies and letters of home, but it was all very much like we do this because it is our faithful and rightful duty to remember that you're our daughter. <laughs> yeah, it was more of a relationship that's like, you know, instead of like, you know, mommy and daddy, I love you. It's like, yes, mother, thank you. I appreciate what you do yeah. for me sort of it's, thing. It's much more uh, an arrangement, <laughs> like yeah. almost a contractual agreement. That... Like I, I, I had like a great respect and appreciation for my parents, but never did that I warmth. have like yeah the warmth that, was never there it was never there yeah. so my jacket um just as a sort of as a response to all this was very much like as opposed to traditionally you know the mother of the household would put together this jacket and and you know patch in all these really lovely pieces of fabric that meant something to the family my mother uh would have basically had someone else do it and would overlook the process and go mm, she yes, paid a tailor is... a lot of money yeah so, so, so it's got, it's got all around. the latest fashion, some yeah. really elegant embroidery. It's yeah. a beautiful jacket. It's an elegant jacket. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it, it, it really is striking. It's got like fringes of golden foil on it. It shimmers in the light when it hits it. It's, it's really quite striking and powerful to see. Yeah. And, 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 and that's always been your relationship with, with your family. Yeah. It's, it's perfect and it lacks any warmth yeah and i almost kind of feel like the jacket itself if, if people were to see me uh on the street it's like oh that that woman's a dog that's a very peculiar peculiar jacket it doesn't it almost it almost doesn't look like a yeah. jacket belonging a lot to of the a dog's dog. coats are almost homely in comparison like they're made from home they're do it yourself they're not made by artisans like yours yeah um and and in fact your teachers at the temple would wear uh jackets that they were given when they were 18 and and they're frayed and they're thin and they you can see through them now or they've been they've completely disintegrated and they've been had parts have been patched on to new jackets through the years um your coat is your badge of office it's your reminder of home um and and more than that it's also because of its 
the ceremonial purposes of it and 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 what it represents, it becomes a, a protection almost against demonic influence. Uh, it's it's more than just a coat. It's a dog's coat. Uh, Ori. Yeah. Speaking of protection from demonic influences. <laughs> yeah, yeah uh, my coat sucks. <laughs> I hate my coat. I don't like my coat. I don't yeah. want my coat. You come Get from my coat. quite possibly the most different family than Cassie. Yeah, so, like, as you were describing, like, the coats are, like, this honorable thing that's patched together by, like, friends and family, like, where you grew up and, like, like a set of memories that yeah. uh, comprise it. All my memories are horrible because um, before I became a dog, before I was part of this, you're not from a member. Faith. You're not from a family of the faith. No, you're from a family uh, of merchants from the east who were not members of the faith. They had just traveled and were living in a branch with someone else. Yeah, and uh, and on one occasion, uh, my mother was possessed by a demon and killed my dad in front of me. That was real scary. Um, I was eventually saved by, uh, by the faith. The dogs came um, into town, another group of dogs, yeah. which, uh, I mean, I guess we could even write down the relationship if you know who that dog is. We could add that as one of your relations. Uh, um, oh, yeah. yeah I never, like, I which never dog, considered that. Which dog actually saved you from, from that darkness and pulled you out of it? Because uh, I don't, well, yeah, we, I haven't, I didn't determine yeah. that. Because when uh, we talked, it was, we decided it was, uh, the dogs came into your branch, mm-hmm. um, solved the mysteries of what was wrong in town and found out it wasn't actually because your parents were possessed. It wasn't their fault. It was something else was going in in town of a corrupt steward mm. uh, who was siphoning money uh, from other branches and hoarding it for himself, becoming prideful and making gold idols, that the protection on the town dropped away and the demons began to just, your parents were collateral damage yeah. in a story that didn't even involve them. And the murders began to go through town. It wasn't the only person to have died in that town, but it was mostly members who weren't of the faith, who were killing each other, which was only invigorating the steward in town to double down on what he was doing to protect yeah. the faithful, was- which created quite a lot of corruption. The dogs came in, set corrections to that, and were able to actually exercise the demon from your mother, but not before uh, your father had been killed. Yeah. It was, it's like if a chick track actually happened. Like, that's, that's what my, <laughs> my childhood was. It's a little it's like, like, like <laughs> oh, oh that if, only, real. if only that guy could have stopped playing Dungeons & Dragons five minutes sooner, <laughs> this unrelated was, person wouldn't be my dead. My dad would still be uh, alive. Yes. Yeah, uh, it's a little... But, it was, but uh, yeah, so that shook me as a, <laughs> a as, a, as a kid. And, like... Uh, now, your mother and, still made the coat, though. She still did. Because when she was saved by the dogs, you and your mother uh, converted to the faith, and it was agreed that... As part of her penance, um, you would become a dog. It was almost like taking the night's watch here. Like you yeah, left yeah. your home. It was no longer really safe or comfortable for you. Yeah. And, and that I mean, the like, dogs would adopt you. The thing about that is like. As insurance that your mother would never stray again. Yeah. And she did like she contributed to this coat that like we all have. Like that, like my coat, uh, in particular, like has. And the her town helped as well. But they and helped the kind of passive aggressively because they don't. Here's, yeah, like, like, here's the thing. When you, you watch your mom kill your dad, yeah. like, there's, like, a, a tension. And you're that 17. Really, yeah. Yeah. Like, you're already in your rebellious years. Yeah. And, <laughs> and, like, that just is awkward. Uh, it makes for, for bad family conversations. Um, and, and <laughs> Awkward to, dinner conversation. Yeah, and it's just like, it's more of, I think I even wrote in my sheet, is it's more of a coat of shame for me. Yeah. So what I typically do is I wear another coat, coat over. over top of, of that coat. You're always sweaty. Yeah. No, it, <laughs> it is hot. It is not, uh, it's uh, not form or function. It's just like, it's for me to hide. And like it's always there. Like if if I have to get into a situation where I need to like prove that I'm a dog or something, I could like you know like pull uh, the one coat away yeah. to like reveal yeah. it underneath, and everyone will be like, "Oh shit, a dog." But like it's not something I like to advertise, and the the memories that are like itched into it uh, aren't ones I particularly yeah. want to remember. 
So, and with Jen, we didn't actually talk about your coat ahead of time. I forgot to. Whoops. Um, but I do know that you have uh, Sister Inez is your Captain Pike who, like, convinced you to join up with the uh, the, the Starfleet dogs. And, uh, and, and we have a quarter uh, as another relationship with someone who wanted to marry you that you rebuffed and went, I can't marry you. I'm going to be a dog. And then you head off to join the dogs. Um, and you steal people. I... I I'm not going to say you st- steal people. Steal people. I, <laughs> and you steal a lot of Whoa. things. You steal from people. But um, I'm not going to say you stole the coat because that's just another level of let's not go there yet. Um, I would like to suggest that Sister Inez made a coat for you. And on the coat, she's actually stitched in passages from the Book of Life to remind you basically don't steal, don't steal. It like as many different phrases and ways. <laughs> and, and like even up and down the hands or like a lot of like – like uh, the, the 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 hand with all the fingers and thumb outstretched represents the tree of life. It's like the um, uh, it, it's 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 a sign that you're a member of the faith, and you, you wave to someone with your fingers outstretched. Uh, it's like yeah, think of the the Vulcan peace sign of dogs of the vineyard, mm-hmm. and it's 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 that's the hand, and that's been like stitched and stamped all over the coat, like handprints to like. You, to watch what you do with your hands. Don't <laughs> steal anything. You can do this. The whole thing is just going like, rah, rah, rah. It's made by your number one cheerleader. Well, as we learned from my accomplishment, my character really needs the, the little role reminders. Yeah. So actually write down as your belongings a coat of remembrance. Okay. And, uh, and, and 1d6. So you meet yourselves... The three of you are brought together um, by one of the counselors at at the temple. Um, You're going to be given your first assignment as a group since your initiation. You've all been brought together into the room. You've been given um, uh, horses and a wagon to deliver uh, supplies to a nearby branch uh, called Paint Creek. And uh, uh, Paint Creek is a mining district uh, that is run, and actually the mine itself is owned by uh, Brother Tabor Clifford. And so you have been asked to head out there. There's been rumors that uh, there's been a gold rush to Paint Creek by a number of faithless, and people from like all over, even outside the territory, are, are rushing to Paint Creek because words that gold is just being lifted out of the river. You don't even have to go into the mine. It's just there's just gold to be found, and so everyone's been heading there. So, uh, uh, Bride of Bridal Falls and and the and the the Order of the Dogs have decided they would like to send you. This is it's a it's a prosperous town. It's a peaceful town. Uh, Brother Clifford is well liked by other dogs that have visited. Should be uh, a good first job uh, to go there. So you're tasked with going to town, deliver the mail. Deliver supplies. There's there's a uh, food and preserves and things like that, as well as uh, investigate the nature behind this gold rush, and see that there isn't something more going on in town, and of course assist, um, however uh, you can, the, the the residents of the faith and preserve the faith, and protect the town. If there is demonic influence, they are trusting the three of you to be able to know what is best. Uh, uh, for for the uh, for the for the territory. Mm. Okay. All right. All right. So uh, you 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 get your gear together. You've got your uh, 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 we didn't mention or you've got a pair of glasses that you have to wear whenever you read. Yeah, I I can't see a thing without <laughs> can't my see glasses. A thing without your glasses. That's actually a trait. I can't see a thing without my glasses. Yeah. Uh, and uh, Cassie, you've got um, what are some of the uh, one of the belongings you're bringing along with you? Um. Uh, we wrote one of them down. I can't remember now. Uh, uh, so we've got um, my elegant book of life. Yeah, yeah. You've got oh yeah. You've got this 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 like again another commissioned Bible that was sent by your mother. It's not even like a family heirloom. Um, yeah. Oh my goodness. You're such a one percenter. And uh, and Jen, <laughs> you've got on you. You've got actually got a compass that was given to you by this man who wants to marry you. And what was his name? Uh, uh, Brother Bogart. Brother Bogart and. Uh, um, and, and Ori, as you're getting your horse together, you actually see your friend Garth, uh, that you all train together. Uh, you, you've mentioned him I as a relation. I barely see him, but yes. Uh, he's, he's up with, uh, a, a, his group of dogs and they're heading to another branch. Um, uh, they've been told, uh, that it's a place called, um, uh, Lemon Fort and they're heading to Lemon Fort. And, uh, <laughs> what? I just... I'm sorry. I'm, I'm just getting like a... 
Just getting a mental image. You just like lemon fort, and it's just like it's a literal fort made of like lemon, like coffee cake. I really hope we go to Lemon Fort now, just so I can shatter <laughs> all of Cassie's dreams. Um, all, all of these. It things, just like, sounds like a level from like a Kirby game. <laughs> <laughs> like that and Paint Creek. Like I, I'm hoping everywhere we go has a very literal name. <laughs> Like, like, what's wrong with the creek? It's made out of paint. We can't drink paint. You'd think that'd make it harder to find the gold in the creek. Yeah. So, so everything's just painted gold. Um, All right, listen. So you've got your you've got a wagon load <laughs> of pail and parcels. I didn't get to the need delivery. Oh, go I, ahead. I, well, I I just wanted to like uh, Garth and I have yeah. have a bit of history. Oh, okay. Uh, not, not great history. Oh, I thought you guys were partners. We were partners. Oh, you were. Oh no, ex partners. We, yeah. And it, but uh, we we each took a different path in the academy. So, but uh, yeah, we're, he we're he all, joined up with Dog Squad. We're all in the Dog all, Squad Five. We're all on the same team. They're all but, like hoo uh, and they all get up and they ride off in formation. Yeah. So uh, he's got his new brothers now. We 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 kind of just like. Like he has to like kind of get my attention because I can't really make forms or shapes with my eyes, but I can I can recognize his voice, okay. and he just says, "Right on, Wade." I say, "Right on, Garth." Why would you do this <laughs> to me? <laughs> why? This is why I brought Ori, so the, the game will never get too serious. That was a serious moment. <laughs> okay, so none of nothing about that was was comical. As you get, I was just that's his name. That's my name. That's so you guys Wayne arrive. Sanders. So you arrive at your wagon <laughs> and you see that the wagon is mostly orders for brother Tabor Clifford, like personal orders that he's put in. Uh, uh, he sent money down to Bridal Falls. This is one of the reasons what's triggered you being sent to deliver it back, not just any other mailman. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, uh, in the back of the wagon, it is loaded with some like very expensive, fine things. There's a pianoforte. Uh, uh, like tied down into the back of the wagon, um, a set of fine china put into a, a, a wooden crate and like filled up with like feathers and stuff to keep it from knocking around. A, a crate of wallpaper rolls, uh, wallpaper in the frontier, uh, books, uh, uh, an indoor toilet, uh, like, the, like really something else. And uh, there's and then and then of course and there's also mining equipment and other um, uh, uh, random selections of stuff that other members of the branch have put in. But the the big items there are all to be delivered to Brother T- uh, Clifford. So just a collection of opulence. Yeah. 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 So he's Cl- not even, so, not even being so wait, subtle. So just just to confirm, Clifford is not a dog. No, Clifford, uh, Tabor Clifford <laughs> is the steward of Paint Creek and the owner Ori! of the mine. <laughs> God damn it. You're no. That's I was just cl- clarifying. Were you? Were you? <laughs> I was. Just did you? you did, I'm assuming you. But didn't he's. Catch but he's that. like. A... I can hear the plane flying over my head right now. <laughs> <laughs> but he's like. But he's. It, are all of these are his belongings? Like these uh, are the, the fine sent china, in. the wallpaper, the roll books, indoor toilet. Yeah, they're all. So, so he's he's pretty big in this yeah, town. He's. He's 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 easily the richest man in town. I yeah. mean, he owns the mine, and there's a gold rush coming to town. Yeah. So, he's he's doing well, and it, he's not hiding it. Yeah. Um, these things are all things that like my character, like Elise, is very used to seeing these sorts of things. It's like, oh, okay, yeah, this guy's, you know, he's he's got his stuff. Cool. I'm okay. hoping if he likes us enough, maybe he'll let me have a go at that indoor toilet. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I like you. He'll, got, he'll be you right got in your the face. Then, yeah. straight. I like it. <laughs> so you're, you're you're heading down the road. Uh, How do these dang things work? <laughs> you want to you want me to move on to the next? Yes. Thing? Yes. Go yes, ahead. Sorry. sorry. Yeah. So uh, a few days travel uh, as as you head out to Paint Creek, uh, and you're 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 heading down um, uh, through uh, uh, through a trail as uh, you see uh, up on the road. Uh, you're now. A little bit out of the ways of the of the town limits of the branch limits, and you see uh, two horses uh, tied up at the side of the road, um, and uh, their owners uh, don't seem to be around. But the, the horses are, are are tied up and they're standing at the side of the road. Mm. And as the uh, wagon begins to go past, you hear um, what sounds like a heavy rustling uh, in the bushes just outside, um, and and you hear uh, someone cry out. Just out into the tree line. 
Into the tree line. Like, uh, like just past the tree line. Like, it's out yeah. of your sight. It's in the trees. Right. You hear, like, a, ah! Okay. I, uh, sounds like something worth investigating. Mm. So, sorry, just to uh, just frame things again. So, uh, we're like we're in the cart. We're like on the caravan. Oh, you're on your horses, and or you've or, got or you've got we... your some of your horses might be tied up to a yoke on the front of the wagon. Okay, so we're stopped. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah, if you yeah. want to stop, yeah. I mean, you're going past two horses. You've heard crying out, and there's rustling in the trees. Oh, yeah, that sounds like something to investigate. Okay. So yeah. just yeah. Uh, what's going to happen here in the way this game is is I'll just keep saying yes to whatever you want to do. I'll keep answering all of your questions as you describe what's going on and I'll respond up until there's like a conflict, in which case I'm going to say, okay, we have to roll dice mm. to get through and these are the stakes. Right. But as long as there's nothing up for stakes, um, you guys can just keep exploring as we go. So uh, you want to explore to the trees, so just let's... Let's just have a conversation here. Yeah. We so should proceed with first? caution yeah. since uh, we've got all those goods and we yeah. we all wander off into the woods. So I'm yeah. going to keep That's an eye true. on the woods. Yeah. This could, that, that could be a who, who's very keeping, big trap. Who, who's, keeping <laughs> a high, who's keeping eye on the uh, materials? This is a good question. It should probably be one of us since we're you're anti-gun. Yeah. I, I can't keep an eye on on Right, because you don't have eyes. So I guess I should be the eyes. Yeah. Okay, so the kleptomaniac is going to be <laughs> so left behind. He's going to be left with the goods. <laughs> All right. <laughs> and, uh, oh, we didn't mention everyone's names. We have Jen is playing uh, Sister Hester. Yes. And uh, uh, you, Ori, are playing Brother Wayne. Yes. And uh, Cassie is uh, Sister Elise. That's correct. Okay, so Elise and Wayne, uh, you head into the trees? Yes. Uh, okay, as you start uh, heading in, you um, uh, as you're going through the bushes, you actually find uh, a shoe uh, discarded uh, in, in, in off into the bush. It's been run aside, mm-hmm. and and you can actually see like it, you don't even need to be a tracker to see the, the 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 bushes that have been pushed aside and and the 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 weight of a person that has gone through and and. You know, you know, like when you see someone yeah. going through tall grass and it's all been pushed aside. I can kind of like, yeah. I can feel the, like, the trees yeah. parting, yeah. like the, the stuff parting away. And you, and you can hear the, uh, you can hear the, the crying out is uh, coming just around the tree. Hmm. I'm going to. The whole tree rocks. Yeah. I'm going to look to, uh, to you. Yep. Uh, this looks, this looks serious. Mm. Um. Yeah, let's keep going. I'm gonna get my hand ready. You get your hands on, the, your, on the holster okay. of, of my gun. All right, and uh, uh, and kind of just <laughs> push push some well, of the bushes aside to see what's around the tree. Yeah, and just like well, just have my hand out because like I can't, I literally can't see like five feet in front of me. Like I think you need to like take. Okay, point, okay, okay. your nearsightedness like, yeah. is not like you're not le- you're like you're you're not. Forgive me, Steve. You're not Steve Blind. Right. Uh, no, I'm, well, you, you, it's you, because of you my You don't glasses. have 2200 vision if you're not wearing your glasses. All right, fine. Because you wouldn't have made it to 17 in this world with that kind of vision <laughs> uh, as a dog. Uh, yeah. you, you have enough vision to get through day-to-day life. What you can't do with well, your nearsightedness is read without your glasses, uh, certainly read maps or see any details up close. And um, uh, But your nearsightedness doesn't affect, like, range shooting. Um, it's just when things are up close, closer like where you are and I, five feet away from each other, yeah, yeah. you start having problems with details. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you can still walk through trees. Like you're not like with your eyes closed feeling yes, around. Yes, I understand. Mm-hmm. Yes. Just wanted to I got, correct I got that. that. Just wanted yeah. to. Sorry. Didn't mean to smack you down there. <laughs> As you were. Right. So we're walking, <laughs> we're, we're walking forward. Yes. Okay. All, All right. right. We're walking. We're okay. Walking. So as you, as you go through it, so, so the, 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 the noise is just around the, the corner of this tree. Uh, who want? Are you are you reaching around the tree? Are you walking around? Or is your gun out? Like how are you? My gun. My how are you going to go out, around this blind spot? I'm not. It's not out. I'm just okay. like I'm. I'm at the ready. Like right. I'm. Who's gonna go first? Who's going ready around for the like blind a quick spot? draw? But but there's nothing. Um, I'll take point. Sure. Um, I'll, I'll cover the the flank, I guess. So it 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 seems as if they've kind of peeled off. Like around the corner. Yeah, and in fact, you see another shoe. Uh, uh, often, uh, this is a, a different shoe. It's uh, this one's a a, a boot, uh, probably for for uh, a, an adult male uh, that's been thrown off into into the bushes. The hell? Okay. And uh, the tree uh, uh, bangs again. Okay, so I kind of 
take cover sort of behind the tree and peek around the corner and see what it is I can see. Just as Elise peeks around the corner, uh, you see um, a man with his britches at his ankles uh, having sex with a woman up against the tree, and she's crying out. She oh, okay. looks to be in her early 20s. All right. Yeah. This, it, is not, this is not This is not. freaking cool. As soon as you this peek your head cool. around, she makes eye contact with you mm-hmm. and screams and then starts laughing. And the guy sees what's going on and he starts laughing. They don't stop. What the hell? Is this illegal? That's happening right now? It's out in the bushes. It's just, it's just two, two, people, two people just, just two people going at it? Just... Two people going at it out in the bushes. Oh. That's less sinister, but uh, infidelitous, I guess, t- uh, towards our creed. Uh, the uh, the the man uh, uh, he starts laughing and uh, he pulls himself out and pulls up his britches <laughs> oh, and okay. <laughs> and he's like, nothing to see here, dog. Nothing to see here at all. Please just be on your business. We're just having a good time without you. Uh huh. Okay. I mean, at this point, Elise is just kind of like shocked and unsure of what, what. <laughs> she okay. she she's so, laughing yeah. into the tree, and she goes, "It's I was just walking down the road." And he taps at a tin star on his on his vest, uh, and he goes, "A uh, local peace officer," and I just uh, saw this woman was in need of some assistance, <laughs> and uh, oh, we uh, oh, we're just having a little interrogation here. It's fine. That's not what that looked like. <laughs> and, uh, and that and is very not what it looked like. The woman is is getting herself together and uh, have you seen my shoe? Oh, we did actually. Oh, he's laughing. We absolutely did, have, we have seen have your shoe. shoe. I go, wait, can you point me in the direction, please? I don't know. We didn't pick it up, but it's it's back that way. <laughs> she laughs and she kind of starts yeah. to skip off. At and this goes, point, I think I yell into the trees. What's she, taking she yells you guys up, so long? I'll see you later, kid. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh. <laughs> okay. You're clearly new around these parts. Of course, most of your dogs don't stick around long to get to know the locals. Uh. Okay. Wait. Uh. Just, I'm all just... about getting to know the locals. That. Okay. Okay, dude. Just keep your freaking pants on. Yeah. Gross. <laughs> keep, keep, your, keep your shoes on. You. You freaking. He, so, he, so, anyway, hang so, on, wait, hang on. So, so, out of, out of, out of, out of game, out of character here, what I was, I was understanding that, the, like, so she cried out, it was not the kind of crying out that nope. I was, okay. No, nope. misinterpreted the cry. Misinterpreted mm. the cry. Cries of pleasure. Yeah. Uh, I switched. see. Hitting that tree real hard. Hitting Jeez. that tree real hard. Re- uh, was yeah. it, did it seem out of place hard? Um, because it was like shaking. It was shaking forest. back and forth, boom, 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 with a with a rhythm. How big is this tree? Like, <laughs> well, let me get the logistics of it for a second. It's not too hard to shake a big tree. I guess, but like, uh, but enough, like to, enough to shake to friggin, other like, trees. What? It's just a matter of like getting the rhythm going, and then once it starts shaking a little bit, is it this starts from to shake personal a experience? Seems suspect, <laughs> but okay. This, uh, this seems highly suspect, also, but okay. It was also the it was, it was setting you guys up. Yeah, oh, yeah. I was setting you guys up for an awkward situation. Right. No. Uh, Good. I enjoyed it's it greatly. The setup. Right. So. Thank you. Good. Thank you. Good. So. <laughs> so I'm gonna. I guess I'm gonna start talking to this. He sheriff. makes some insult about how, like, you know, a bunch of you dogs would never understand since none of you've ever had sex, anyways. Which is an insult that falls flat on since you've taken vows of celibacy, anyways. Uh, it, 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 like so, it's he it, he 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 shows no respect at all yeah. for either of the two of you who have your coats. Even though your coat is covered up, you can still see the trim. Yeah, and uh, it's obvious that the two of you are dogs, and it's obvious that he doesn't give a crap. Yeah, he's a peace officer, you see. Uh huh. Name is Tabor Clifford. What's your, oh oh, he's Clifford. You're, no, his you're name Clifford. is uh. Oh no no sorry no he's he's on the payroll of Tabor Clifford his name is uh, I'm sorry name's Duncan Hathaway name's Duncan Hathaway but folks around here call me the Salt Lake Kid. Well, cool. I will call you by your regular name and not by your dumb nickname. Yeah, I don't. <laughs> we will definitely be not referring to you by your stupid made up nickname. That <laughs> no one probably calls you. 
to you. It's just a That's what I actually said to him, too. Himself. People call me the Douglar. It's like no, sister, they like sister hard ass and uh, brother can't take a joke. Oh, I got a joke, but I don't think you'd like it. It's too sophisticated for you. Hey, if you got problems with the way I conduct business around here, you can take it up with Tabor Clifford. I'm on his payroll. Uh, if you'll excuse me, I've, I gotta got to do some more uh, uh, patrolling. If you know what I mean. And he he. Grabs his boot that was over by the side and he puts it up onto his leg and uh mm-hmm. so I, I hope you've been looking after my horses over there. Oh, all right. I'll see you two around. You're patrolling without your horses? When he tied them up. Those are his horses that he tied up. Right, he's just gonna patrol the woods. No, he's walking off to the horses. Oh, he's, okay. He's walking off to untie them and take okay. them away. Okay. Because matter of fact, we're on our way to see uh Mr. Clifford. The uh might it might it nice of you to uh to lead the way if it, you, if and it's not so Brit, if it's not gonna why, interrupt your patrolling. Why would you do this? I do not want to look at this man another second. I just wanna move on. <laughs> uh <laughs> this is out of this is out of character. Yeah. Duncan <laughs> the salt lick kid. Um he uh He's he, 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 he once again throws some snide insult towards the station of the dogs. Uh, says you obviously have no sense of direction. You can't even follow a straight road. Uh, and uh, you know what? We don't need be, you. Be happy to show you the direction. It's one direction. And you head down the road. Yeah. No. And then that's and then, fine. And then Thank you. Yeah. Bye. Get out of here before I show you a direction to go in. No, like, like literally, I just like shoot him like you, uh, like I shoot him like daggers from my eyes, essentially, and yeah. then just stomp. Like I have just bolted off already. Like I have. He, uh, he does one I of those like left. cowboy spits. Good, gross. You're like <laughs> as as classy as ever. Yeah, I'm leaving. This guy seems like great a scumbag. And yep. as as you're walking off, uh, Turbo uh, Gross, brother Wayne. Turbo Gross. You look over your shoulder and you see the Salt Lake Kid pulling out a flask. It's not his name. And he, <laughs> it's really not. You his see name. Duncan Hathaway, and he pulls out a a, a flask from his vest. Mm. He taps his peace officer badge again. He's always moving around. He likes to tap it. Yeah. That's and then weird. and then uh, shoots it back. Okay, thank you for that one. Right. It was good. It was the As, five out of seven um, perfect score. <laughs> and and uh, Cassie, Elise, you uh, as you're heading ahead, near where the shoe, uh, the the woman's shoe had been dropped, you see hanging in a bush uh, a glimmer of gold. Okay. And you see uh, if, if you if you go to inspect it. Yeah, I'm gonna go and examine uh, it. It's a necklace. Uh huh. And it's a beautifully crafted golden tree of life. Which is the symbol of the faith, right? Right, right? and it, it looks like a, a, well, it looks like it's got five branches heading out from a single stem, all kind of reaching out with one branch going up and two bending up to the side. It's got a bit of a, um, I don't know. It just it's the it, anyway. It's a symbol of the tree of life, right? And kind of, kind and of like it, candelabra, yeah, like kind of like, like exactly, thing? right? But it's a, it That's reaches what out it like looks a tree. Like. It actually looks like oh. a, it's it's there on the paper, but I can't oh. describe it. It's, I thought that so somebody it looks like, like drew the print symbol almost like for a, some reason. <laughs> yeah, it almost looks like a, a three pronged pitchfork with two more um, branches coming out uh, halfway, so it kind of they reach out in, into five points. Yeah, uh, it's actually well six points if you count the bottom. So the, anyway, that's that's the tree of life, and someone's it, it's been crafted into this beautiful golden necklace and it's and it's on a golden chain right and, and and it was actually the glint of the light coming through the trees that caught your eye and it looks like it had been discarded probably by the woman who went to go get her shoes mm-hmm. are you going to leave yeah. it there are you going to bring it with you i'm going to take it with because i mean obviously this is a symbol of the faith and yeah. it at okay. the very least will bring it to so um add in uh, a uh a, a golden Tree of Life necklace, and it's 2D6 because it is both of a normal size but of an excellent quality. Mm. And uh, you, uh, uh, Jen, uh, you're sitting out there, Sister Hester, and you hear um, some yelling back and forth and laughing and uh, a woman in in, in a a dress uh, putting a shoe onto her foot uh, laughs and she sees you and just starts laughing some more. Unties her horse and uh, hops on and trots off to town. And uh, a minute later, you see um, another man, not in as humorous a mood, uh, with his hat. And you can see a, a, a tin 
star pinned onto his vest. Um, oh, he was left behind. The two of you were coming out first, right? You oh, yeah. Walked no, away from I, him. I, yeah, I yeah. stormed Never mind. off. Like, you, I, can, I, you don't, you don't see. Have, okay. absolutely you, you won't see Duncan Hathaway. Then you see your two compatriots come storming out yeah. and like, I can't believe what we just saw <laughs> in all my ears. It's like... <laughs> You know, if it was one thing, like it's like you know what you do, do you do you? I'm gonna leave. I'm gonna let it go. I'm gonna leave it be. Whatever. Like this is just weird, and you're whatever. We're just gonna walk off. <laughs> do do like we have more important shit to deal with. Yeah. Okay. But like he was downright like disrespectful. So fuck that guy. Be, it'd be a shame if uh, Mr. Clifford had to hear of his exploits. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, indeed. So he, Good thing uh, we're going to see him right now. Exactly. So as you, as you head into town, um, you can actually very clearly see as you come up over a hill looking down into Paint Creek that there is an east side on one side of a river and the west side on the side where the mine goes into the mountain. And on the west side, the place looks clean and vibrant and the grass is growing. There's flowers and there's color and you can almost smell like bread in the air that's being freshly baked and everything looks new and really well done. You can hear children laughing. And on the east side across the river, it's muddy and brown and the buildings are like literally in some cases just slab wood leaning against wood with with tarp and, and canvas, not tarp, but canvas kind of covering things like it's a tent city mm. and it's really um, uh, uh, quite poor and, 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 and not in a great place. Mm. Um, but as, as you come in through, uh, there is like the uh, Paint Creek town, like the township sign as you're coming in. It's not just like a wooden sign, population 72 or anything. It's like it's got like gold flecks that have been like cast onto the side by uh, some kind of like uh, silver worker or something like a goldsmith and it's and it's, it's it's really like uh, I mean it's a kind it's, it's opulent it's the kind of thing you wouldn't even see at, at, at in in, uh, in bridal falls um, and then you come back and you come down lower into town and it's uh, uh, you can see there's a lot of people are dressed up to prospectors who who are you know out in the river and they're sifting and they're trying to find uh, some of the gold, and um, uh, and uh, and as you're coming through, uh, you you come down towards the river, and there's a crowd that's gathered around, and there's some you know older men and beards and stuff, and they're trying to, and they're not finding, they're not finding anything, and they're getting angry, and some people are storming off because well, they've shown up again, and they just they haven't found anything, and uh, and you see uh, another crowd, a cheers coming out, and, uh, and 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 a man comes out of the crowd, and he's got like a bucket of gold that they've pulled out of the of the river and people are cheering and they're like you know patting him and his and his, and his men are around him and 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 they're and they're heading it up to town to uh to to you know weigh it and and stuff and there's like a crowd and and and, and he passes the bucket to one of his his like co-workers and he's like signing papers for people and and everyone's kind of like around him and um and 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 yeah, and it's uh, uh, you 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 hear one of the prospectors who who just gave up like I can't believe it again they find them again. There's nothing in this river. I don't understand it. And he throws his uh, his 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 equipment into the mud and just storms off in the direction of a bar. And uh, is there anything uh, I'll, do you want me to just keep describing the town? It seems like a it's a real real divide of fortune. Going around mm -hmm. here. That's what, yeah. Yep. And like, uh, like abnormally so. <coughs> like, <laughs> like suspiciously so. Yeah. As you get a little closer to this crowd, because they're walking up towards you as they're heading up to, uh, 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 I guess, like a, a trading um, uh, uh, post. Post uh, that's just up on the top where they'll, 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 they'll weigh and they'll trade and they'll put in the order so they can <clears throat> convert the gold into other stuff. Um, you see this man who's in the center of the group who was signing a paper. Uh, he's got around him um, the same uh, necklace mm -hmm. that you found in the woods. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and you notice a number of people that are around him are all wearing these golden Tree of Life necklaces. And they're all cheering. They're all clean. They're wearing good clothes, fresh clothes. Um, and, yeah, you're, you, you spotted it. Right on, uh, Ori. The, this divide of wealth. There's mm. those who are finding gold, and those who are not finding gold. Yeah, and those and those that are finding it are finding <laughs> lots. 
is what yeah. was, is what tips me off the most. And like, you, yeah, it's it's just it's just not there's no there's no trickle down at all. It's it's really just the it seems like this one group of people is getting everything somehow. Oh yeah. yeah. You see a, a woman approach the the man with the golden necklace in the center of the crowd, mm-hmm. um, uh, and she calls him uh, Counselor Paul. So you learn his name, uh, and she asks if she can um, have money to feed her family uh, uh, this week. They they've run out, and uh, times are tough for them right now. And he scoffs, and he says. Uh, 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 something around uh, gold only for the faithful, only for the faithful. And he just dismisses her outright and she's left behind. And you can almost tell by sort of the way of like her non-uniform or conservative dress. Like she's uh, someone from the East who's not a member of the faith, uh, uh, just one of the other people that would live in town. Mm-hmm. And uh, she goes this. She's walking away. She, she yells back at him. Uh, Stuart, uh, uh, Stuart Clifford never treated, never treated us this way before. Uh, we, 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 look after, we look after the whole community or none of the community. And, and he, uh, he just rebukes her with her, his eyes and, uh, and, and, and his crowd kind of closes in around him and they continue to walk up to the trading post and leaves her behind um, with tears in her eyes, wondering how she's going to feed her family tonight. So do we want to ask that woman what happened with uh, Clifford? Yeah. Since we're supposed yeah. to be finding him. I think that would be wise. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I want to I want to learn about sure. what's going on here. So why don't we have she she sees you three coming up and begins to walk away. She doesn't want to talk to dogs. She's afraid of dogs. You can tell immediately when she saw her coats. She's like, "Nope, nope, nope, nope." And she starts to walk away. So if you want to get her to open up and share her story and share the situation of Paint Creek, um, we'll roll for it. Mm. And the stakes will be she opens up and tells you what she knows or she shuts you out. All right? Yeah. Sound good? Mm -hmm. That sounds good. Okay. So I – who wants to be the one to like approach this woman? Mm. Um, I can try first since I have – I guess sort of this sort of thing. Yeah. I feel like you're you're kind of the the people person. Yeah, I'm the sort of the. Mm-hmm. the it's acuity the, and heart the, the, is the what you're going to be downer. rolling when you start. <laughs> the talker downer. Yeah. The don't do it or. Yeah. So this is fun. The, this is actually please, the first we are time. We can be friends. We'll we'll, we'll, probably, okay. we'll probably end this episode on this. So hopefully this ends with a little bit of answers before we wrap up episode one. Sure. And this is also going to help teach people at home how these dice work in this game. We've all played it through in our accomplishments. We've learned it. It's kind of a, an interesting gambling way of rolling the dice and that we roll all of our dice and then we present in in small groups numbers ahead of time as we raise and then see and raise and give uh, uh, to, to get through the, the, the confrontation. Uh, so uh, this woman, whose name you don't know, uh, is uh, uh, walking away from you and she just, she doesn't, she doesn't want the kind of help you're bringing, is what she says. Right, okay. Uh, so this is acuity and heart, right? Yeah. Okay, so that's going to be 8d6 uh, for me. We just okay, those. so you can grab 8 six-sided die. We're just keeping them in a pool in the center because there's just a lot of dice to go back and forth in this. Yeah. But unlike other games, while well, Cassie's picking them out, we don't add the dice together. We roll the dice as a group, and that's now my pool of dice. And I'm going to arrange them in the order of the dice. Uh, uh, so I have a, a 6, a 5, 5, 4... Uh, a number of twos, another six, and a two. It's actually a pretty nice spread of dice. But I don't add them together. What's going to happen is Cassie, because she's trying to get my NPC's attention, uh, to get her uh, to to stop and open up and tell us what's going on. Um, and so you're going to raise with, like, hold on now, right? Well, how, yeah. what, how much do you want to present forward in your raise? So you rolled a one, two, three, three, five, five, another six, and a six. Yeah. So those are the dice you've got going out. So that's what I've got, We yeah. can use traits and relationships and some of the equipment you have. We can add to that total pool of dice. And what that does is it opens up more options and your ability to stay in the conflict longer and to um, uh, manipulate back and forth. And we'll, we'll explain as we go. So, Cassie, what are you raising with? What's your first? You raise with two dice. 
Yeah, okay. Um, so first, what I think I would like to do maybe is I'd like to use my trait can cal- calm down a room for an extra 1d10. Okay, great. So here's a d10 and give that a roll. Okay. You're going to add that to your pool of dice. And that's a two. And it's only a two, but that's <laughs> but fine. It just it still increases your total number of dice. That still gets added to my pool. So I've got another extra two here now. Okay. Okay, um, so I'm going to uh, start by raising uh, eight. Okay. Yeah. And and then and I'll describe what you're doing. Now that you've given the raise, what are you doing so that I can respond to that? Right. Uh, please, we, we mean no harm. We're just here to help. Uh, is, please, is there anything Some, that you can tell yeah. us? Because you can tell something's wrong. Yeah. Um, she sees your eight, and I'm actually... Uh, I'm going to see you with a nine. She blocks and dodges. And she goes, you know, we... We had we had your community helping us out before. Now you've all turned your back on us. I don't want the kind of help you're bringing. All you're going to bring is more ruin. I have to feed my children. So she's blocked that move. Right. And I've spent my dice. Okay. So I put that away. And um, and you can you can get rid of your dice. They're no longer in there. Yeah. So you get discard them. And now it's my turn to raise. And she begins to quicken her pace. She's going to uh, get a little faster. So because she's not talking to you, she's actually walking away. I'm going to escalate this to physical, which is going to be um, four more that I'm going to roll for my body stat. You're going to get to roll body as well because she's escalated this. You're going to have to like actually chase after her now as she's starting to walk a little bit faster mm-hmm. away to the east side to cross the river into the into the um, shanty town. Whoa, that was like all sixes. So uh, okay. she does, she just starts to like make a scene and starts walking away. And um, you can't help me, she says. And that's a 12. Jeez. She's uh, moving so fast. She's got like the spinny sonic legs going. Yeah. Well, oh, she's, yeah. Just, she's, just, <laughs> she's just gotten into like a quick pace. And you were yeah. already a little further back. And like you're still on your horse. Um... But, again, this is, like, up to you here, Cassie. You can continue to push it, and you can, like, run her down with the horrors and block her off. <laughs> or you can just, like, she doesn't want to talk to me. We're going to have to talk to someone else you can give. And if you give, you can actually hold that number six, the highest dice you've got. You can carry it over to the next confrontation. Right, You okay. don't have to, like, win or lose. I just happen to roll some very high numbers, uh, which I think I've, like, if you want to just keep things talking she doesn't she's walking away and i've got a i'm just saying i mean i've got three more sixes and another five uh so i've got some really good dice here that i've just rolled as she's now taking things she just doesn't want to talk yeah okay well yeah it seems like she doesn't believe that you can help her based on your dice i don't know that there's actually much more that i can do here and if you knew her name you could use like your abilities as the dog to call out her true name Mm -hmm. and that would compel her to stop that affects, and to turn. That it affects, affects people as well? It affects well? righteous souls as well, but only if you know their full true name. Huh. So, okay. So that's, you know, it's, it, 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 it can be done. Although yeah. if there's any kind of corrupting influence, it doesn't always work. You might end up, you know, calling on the demonic influence. Right, right. right. It's, a, it's a tough choice, but like, it, and as, any as of you, the three of you, or the two of you, sorry, uh, Hester and Wayne, you can mm. aid. You can get in on this. You can roll in as well. Mm. And if you roll your dice, you can even spend your dice into Elise. And the three of you, as a group of three as well, you have a lot more authority. If you really want her to stop and you really, like, explain to us what you were doing, why were you accosting the counselor of this town? Can we use things we have to help out? You can use whatever you want that you can justify in the moment. Okay, because I have some ill-gotten gains, and since this woman has money, maybe we or wants money to feed her family, maybe we could persuade her. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So you want to offer her yeah. like yeah. maybe That's we, a good idea. We, yeah. we, we, That's a very we'll idea. give you money for food. Okay. Yeah. Great. So roll your dice into it. So I would get ill-gotten gains. Ill-gotten 1D8. gains one d eight plus um uh. Although uh, you're entering in, you didn't roll the dice with everyone else uh, when Cassie started. So I think the rules are a little bit different. Okay. So instead, you're going to give Cassie the I one d8. One. Right? That makes sense. And Cassie's going to roll the dice. Her. 
if we were all starting together, there's different rules for how the raises you can each raise as we go. But this was clearly like Cassie was going forward, and then mm. Hester's okay. offered this up. So it's a 12. You can take the blow, which is, means you spend three dice, but you can might still be able to like get her attention. You do have two sixes, so you can meet that with a dodge and block. Yeah. But then from there, it's sort of like... Well, it doesn't you matter. Have, you have more sixes to go. Yeah, but I've, I've spent I spent those two sixes. They're going to be gone. Yeah. Right. Okay. And then and then we can we can just we can keep, like you just do you want right. to end it or do you okay. want to just see, keep it yeah. going a little bit further? Let's keep going. All right. So I'm going to meet your twelve with my twelve. Then. Okay. It's like if if it's help with feeding your family that you need, we have that. We can help you. Okay. And I hold out. And now raise. Okay. So I am going to. Raise nine. So it's a four and a five. Four and a five. Yeah. So the four and a five, um, she's going to. I want to match that. I want to dodge and block. She doesn't trust you, but she stops. She's going to take a blow, um, which is going to. Uh, she sees the bag. She goes like. You know, even though this might hurt my family, even though, like, I've trusted you people before, how do I know I can trust you now? I, I might accept help and it'll just be snatched away from me again. Hmm. And she, she puts her hand out. Right. You know, to give, 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 you know, give, it, give it over to me. Okay. So, I mean, I hand it over to her. Okay, and these were the dice you used? Yeah. Okay, so she takes that, mm. and she is, looks at the bag, and she's going to give. So okay. I'm going to give you this six, All right. which is an available dice that you're going to be able to use in the next confrontation. Nice. And she looks at the bag, and the wind is going out of her sails. Even though she rolled a lot, she's got a lot of determination to look after her family. Mm. Um, she was like, I don't want to get in trouble. I don't want to say anything. Thank you. You should just go speak to the steward. Um, okay. We uh, Stuart is uh is he the Tabor one that Clifford. Was... He's the richest man in town that you're delivering the goods for. Oh, yes. Okay. You should talk to Stuart Clifford. Okay. Uh do you know where we can find him? She points up to the biggest house in town. I should have known. And it is. Like it's like <laughs> it's like a chalet. Oh it's God. like the finest of timber work. Okay. It's a several story, or it's two stories tall with a big open balcony mm -hmm. and like a stone steps going down into a garden and pillars. And it's just like, wow. It's opulent. Yeah. All things considered. Like it's almost as big as the town hall. Yeah. And okay. uh, so as uh, you walk up to the hill, because we're just going to wrap the story up. I'm just going to leave you on a moment here to be like, What? As you go up, Stuart Clifford comes out the doors in a, in a nice but, like, respectable, not over-the-top um, dress, uh, robe, uh, uh, as, you know, do his office as Stuart. And his hands clap together. Oh, my parcels have arrived! Uh, and, he, and he calls out for, uh, for his wives to, to, to come out and, and, and help bring in the... Uh, uh, the uh, the goods and uh, and 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 dogs no less welcome welcome to Paint Creek uh, we'll, uh, we'll have a meal ready for you of course and and his two wives come out and one of them's the woman from the forest with the Salt Lake Kid ooh Surprising and she sees absolutely your eyes no one. and she kind of stops for just like a heartbeat yeah and then breaks eye contact with everyone and just goes to get some stuff off the back of the wagon. Not mm -hmm. not, uh, not laughing so much anymore. Yeah, la laugh at us in Norway, don't you? Yeah. And that's where we'll end episode one. <laughs> Welcome to Paint Creek Town. Scandal! The scandal yes. about! <laughs> oh my. But there's also something very wrong, as Ori's already pointed out. There's, oh yeah. yeah. So we've got, we've got a couple threads here. We'll see if we pull them next week. Uh, what do you guys think so far of Dogs in the Vineyard? Ooh, I like it. Yeah, it's a little different, but yeah. I like the I like the dice setup. Yeah. I actually think that's think a really it's interesting really cool. way to do things. It's yeah. a really interesting because uh, unlike some of the other RPGs we've played, it's uh, it's not as combat oriented. Yeah, and believe me, if guns come out, like 
it is very easy for you to die. <laughs> like, it, it, it doesn't take a lot. Well, oh, yeah, you should be yeah, thinking yeah, like a Western, like, too. Like, like if a gun comes out, bodies drop quickly. Yeah. yeah. And it's all about trying to de-escalate. And, and I don't think we've ever played a game that accentuates that, like, attitude of de-escalation, right? What I, what I like about this, like, just really quick, is that, like, in other systems, like, it's a, more about the effectiveness of what you're trying to do. Yeah. Whereas here, it's really you are faced with the imminent threat that everything you're, like, you are, like, what you're trying to do is going to either be, like, stopped or reversed. Like, yeah. you are you are faced with the reality of failure yeah. so yeah. so readily. Back so. and forth, back yeah. and forth every turn. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, and I like it. And it also means as a GM, it's very rare that I'm ever in a place where I can cheat on you. Sure. Like, I, I don't have to throw my punches. There's an, ex- uh, we, we'll talk more about it when we do our debrief, but there is an example in the rule book of, uh, uh, someone sneaks into your bedroom and tries to kill you in your sleep with an axe. Now, if that was Dungeons and Dragons, that would essentially be cheating because there would be no defense you would be able to have to an, a, a, an armed enemy walking in while you're sleeping. That's a coup de grace. It's a one-hit kill, and you're done. There's nothing you can do about it. But in Dogs in the Vineyard, you still roll your dice, and you can still raise, like, I roll in my bed at just the right moment, or I have a bad dream that wakes me up, or or a bird hits the window, or something like you can like maybe the king of life you know did something to help awaken you in time, or you actually take the fall and get hit with the axe, but now you're able to keep fighting. Now roll out of bed and the attack wakes you up, and you can deal with the fact that you're losing blood after the fight, right? And you're just running on adrenaline. And 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 you, I don't know any other games other than um, straight up story games like Monster Hearts, like Powered by Apocalypse, that would allow you to do that, but still allow me to just keep rolling relentlessly against you. Um, uh, your accomplishment, Ori, when we were up against the demon, there were some serious moments where you thought you were going to lose. I super did. Because I yeah. had some serious dice against you. And yeah. I didn't have to feel like if I was doing that in After the Bomb, I'd be like fudging my dice going, eh, whatever. It's a 12. You make it. Because I don't want to kill you. Yeah. But that's but that's what I I, I yeah. hate moments like yeah. that. I but, want I want yeah. the the consequence of failure. And what I like here is I can I can just available. keep playing to the characters. And I had the dice to beat you there, Cassie, with yeah. the, with with the food. Oh yeah, but absolutely. But also, like, what's gonna gain? What's at stake for her? She doesn't want her. She wants the money. Yeah, yeah. like that's absolutely. It. That's yeah. what she asked for in the first place. She doesn't want to yeah. talk to you, but she she has to. Like, her, and in her, fact, her... if you think by giving her the money, you gave up that item, you can cross it off, okay. and you lost. You gave up the 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 confrontation. You didn't get information from her. The yeah. stakes were she opens up. She didn't open up. She took the money and said, "Go talk to the steward." Yeah. So which I, we would have done anyway. And he, like I won. Yeah. But you still were able to advance. Ah, I love that. Anyways. Yeah. yeah. It's cool. I'm rambling. It's super cool. I like it. <laughs> uh, thanks for joining us here on our first episode of Dogs of the Vineyard. We will return. Uh, don't know how many we're going to be able to pack in because uh, we went a little late on our recording sessions. But it's 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 uh, this is this is really cool. Join us again next time where we will return to Pink Creek Branch to find out what is wrong and uh, and if our dogs have what it takes to help set things right. If they even want to set things right, maybe they want to revel in it a little bit. Uh, For your enjoyment, I have been your Game Master tonight, Justin Eacock, and I have been joined around the table with... Cassie D20 Love Chew. Ori Faulkner. Jen Walker. And until next time, thank you for joining us on the Terrible Warriors. Oh, careful there, Justin. That almost sounded like a debrief. Of course, there will be a debrief episode released on Patreon after this campaign is over. And I guess I just couldn't really help myself there. This game's really cool. The dice mechanics really are that different. And of course, Terrible Warriors is released every Monday and every Thursday. And I know Dogs in the Vineyard's a little bit more serious than our usual games. So in that case, come back on Thursday because we've got lasers and feelings. This game's completely crazy. What Derek the Bard and his Edmonton crew have done, it's going to put a smile on your face. And you'll need that, because when you come back on Monday, it's part two of our Dogs in the Vineyard campaign. And as we mentioned in this episode, this first episode isn't actually where the campaign began. It began with our players performing their accomplishments as part of their character creation. Now, it didn't really frame that well as an episode, so... We have packaged it together and posted it onto our Patreon page. 
So as you listen to it, treat it like a prequel. Become a Patreon supporter today, and you'll have access to that, as well as the debriefs of our other campaigns, as well as being able to participate in helping to choose future games, and even being mentioned as a non-player character in future shows that we record. So Thursday, Lasers and Feelings. Monday, Dogs in the Vineyard and your dogs in the vineyard today were Ori Falconer, Cassie Chu, and Jen Walker. Game Master was Justin Eacock. The album art by Steve Saylor. And until we return, thank you for listening to the Terrible Warriors. <laughs>